Hello everyone, this is Raphael, Creative Director on The Long Dark. Thanks for checking in on the next update to our survival mode, which we're calling Vigilant Flame. In Vigilant Flame, we've added a few things that have been long requested by the community. A new, entirely wilderness region, and a major overhaul of our cooking system. Hushed River Valley is a multi-leveled region that connects to Mountain Town, extending some of the same difficult terrain you see around the town of Milton. Hushed River Valley is full of waterfalls, rivers and streams, and lots of cliff areas. We've used Hushed River Valley as a way to prove out some new techniques in environment creation, trying to find ways to create more layers and variety in our environments so that our landmark-based approach to navigation continues to throw new and interesting challenges at our players. There are no human-made structures in Hushed River Valley, so you need to be on the lookout for natural shelters, whether they be the hollowed-out trunks of a large tree, a rock formation providing a natural windbreak, or ice caves. Despite being a highly challenging wilderness region, Hushed River Valley isn't entirely without hope. Keep your eyes open for mysterious signal fires that might lead you to useful shelter locations, and make sure you explore every nook and cranny behind every rock and waterfall in your search for supplies. For years now, our players have had to watch a progress bar represent the experience of cooking food and preparing water in the game. Since the food you find, kill, prepare, and eat is such a big part of the survival experience, we've been trying to find ways to make it more engaging for our players. Replacing the progress bar-based system required an overhaul of several other systems, but we're happy to share that we're rolling out the first iteration on a new manual cooking system. It works as you'd expect it to. You place cookable items on hot surfaces, namely stones near burning campfires or on the surface of a lit cook stove, and wait for them to cook. Each food item requires a different amount of time. If you remove the item too soon, it'll be undercooked and eating it could result in food poisoning. If you wait too long, you could overcook the item to the point where it becomes an inedible burned lump, thus wasting the valuable food and fuel resources you spent on it. Since you can cook multiple items at once, you now have to manage multiple timelines. We've provided a few helpers for this, including the ability to pass time until individual items are completed, but you'll still need to keep an eye on multiple items and timelines. Preparing water works much the same way. We've added two cooking tools, the pot and recycled can. Both can be used to cook food and prepare liquids, and each has different properties relating to cooking volumes or susceptibility to burning food or burning off liquids. We hope you enjoy how we've overhauled the cooking system. We'll be reviewing your feedback to see how we can continue to improve this system, as well as to apply the real-time approach to some of our other common time-based actions. As we've shared in some of our developer diaries, we're adding a new narrative collectible to survival mode in the form of buffer memories. Think of these as the last documents or images stored in a computer's memory before all the technology around Great Bear and beyond was suddenly rendered inert by the mysterious Aurora. Now, when the Aurora appears at night, you might find some computer terminals display snippets of notes, emails, reports, information that provides more world background, and could in the future point to hidden locations and supply caches. We've implemented a first series of buffer memories in Vigilant Flame across a series of specific locations and plan on spreading more around the world in the future. Just keep in mind that one location may have more than one memory to offer. You can track discovered memories in the collection section of your journal. As a result of our manual cooking work, you can now place items directly from the radial menu. This means that you no longer necessarily have to go into your pack to drop items for later placement. Radial placement will be useful for quickly arranging various items and is something we plan to use for more gameplay-oriented placement in the future. For now, the primary benefit is placing items from your food radial directly on campfires or stoves for cooking or placing pots and recycled cans on cooking surfaces so that you can cook food or melt snow for water. In addition to these four main features, we've made dozens of bug fixes, made performance improvements across the game, and added several minutes of new survival mode exploration music. We hope you really enjoy Vigilant Flame, and we look forward to reading your feedback in the community hub at hinterlandforums.com, in our Steam forums, and through our social media channels. You may also notice that we've added a mailing list sign-up form to the game's main menu. If you'd like to be notified of update news and general information about the long dark and other goings on at Hinterland, please take a moment to sign up for this newsletter. Thanks again, and be safe out there, survivors of the quiet apocalypse.